Hey, this is Steve of E6WZ. Let's build and erect a 75 foot high aluminum tubing vertical antenna. I'm going to show how I assembled this vertical using 4 inch irrigation tubing, how I designed the guy attachment points and how I raised the vertical. Perhaps some of my methods could be used to build and erect any kind of vertical structure. Hey, let's get started. For my verticals, I use this 4 inch irrigation tube that they call torque tube. It's got 0.077 wall thickness and I think it's used to build the rotating pivot or those rolling irrigation systems. I purchased this stuff new from a local farm irrigation supply house. Each 40 foot length was only about $200 which I think is pretty affordable. The vertical I'm building is the third element in my directional 160 meter parasitic transmit array and each element is 75 foot high and top loaded with 40 foot opposing wires to bring them close to resonance. Therefore, I need to splice a 40 foot length to a cut 35 foot length. Cutting aluminum tubing is easy with an aluminum blade and the miter saw. The splice is made using an internal coupler made from a 2 foot piece of the same 4 inch tubing. The two foot length of tubing is slit lengthwise in a jig that I built. I used my power saw with an aluminum blade. A second cut is made to remove about an inch of the same material. This allows the coupler to be compressed with worm gears to be inserted into each piece. Since this type of tubing is roll formed instead of drawn or extruded, it needs to be flattened out a bit to fit properly. The tubing is inserted into each piece as the worm clamps are removed and tapped in place with a hammer. I used 1 8 inch aluminum blind rivets to complete the joint. I did experiment using my drill press in the field, but I abandoned that idea since the hand drill worked just as well and in fact it was much easier to handle. I ran six rows of seven rivets each. Don't use cheap no-name rivets. To insulate the element from the ground and to affect the hinge point for raising the element, I built a four-foot external coupler made from this PVC pipe. I used that same jig to cut a slit in the PVC since the internal diameter is slightly too small to fit over the 4 inch tubing. I pre-drilled a 1 inch hole in the PVC to provide access to the element connection bolt. There's a 1 foot insert of the 4 inch tubing at the bottom with a 1 inch air gap.
I also used 5 inch bolts and worm clamps to secure the PVC coupler. A half inch hole is drilled at the bottom through the one foot insert for the hinge bolt. The support post for the vertical is a 4x4 four four treated timber cemented about 2 feet in the ground. By adding a 2x4 on one side, the width is almost a perfect match for the PVC coupler diameter. A 2x6 bracket is screwed and glued onto the base of the post, which is the hinge point for the base. Now this is my third vertical like this and I decided to add these metal brackets. Since the full weight of the vertical together with the downward force from the guy ropes will push on these mounts, I reckon the extra support would help. However, these other two verticals have been up for six years and seem to be okay. Two more 2x6 brackets at the top of the post are added, but I'm not sure they're really necessary. All right, now the vertical has three guy ropes at three levels, 70 feet, 47 feet, and 24 feet. The guy attachments are made with a combination of worm gear clamps. I considered using five inch long eye bolts, but that would require drilling six holes through the tubing at each level, so I decided to avoid that. Now look, I bet there's those that might think these stainless steel clamps won't hold up. But first of all, these same mounts have been in service on my existing two verticals for six years. And I've withstood some pretty serious winds, especially from straight line winds from thunderstorms. Secondly, I decided to actually test this setup using a come along attached to my truck hitch. I don't own a strain gauge to measure the force on this connection and I didn't take it to failure, but I can tell you I was really cranking hard on the come along. Also, notice the level of deformation on these clamps. And here is a drone shot from one of my existing verticals that's been up for six years. Notice that I'm not even getting close to that level of force. My guy rope is the four millimeter, or about five thirty-second inch, premium M rope from Mastrant. It has a strength of about 900 decanewtons, or about 2,000 pounds, and has a very limited stretch. I also use these duplex rope clamps and thimbles, also available from Mastrant. They're way better and easier than just using a knot. The top loading wires are attached to a couple of eye bolts with thimbles and a solder lug for electrical redundancy. To prevent the vertical from sounding like a train whistle in the wind, I added a polyethylene test cap that's usually available at most home building stores. I do give it a shot of plastic ready paint to minimize UV deterioration. All right, let's stand this thing up. Now, I happen to own a 40 foot man lift and I use this as the aerial lift support. Google falling derrick for another option, or you could rent a man lift for the day. As you can see, the lift rope runs from a simple boat winch 
bolted to the support post, up through a pulley attached to a plank bolted to the man lift, and back to the vertical at the 35 foot point. That's about midway along the element. Of course, I can manipulate the man lift from the ground to get it in position. Now notice the significant element sag as it starts to raise up, but that riveted joint seems to hold up pretty well. The entire element only weighs about 100 pounds, so it's not much force on the man lift. You can see some decent deformation uh, here on the pull atta attachment, uh, but that's no problem. It's really easy to crank up. I stop occasionally and set the ropes to the guy anchors, but with no wind, because the element is mostly under tension at the pull point, it won't fall. After all the guys are tensioned, I pull the man lift back, lower it down, and then go back up and remove the pull rope connection from the vertical. The guy anchor points for this vertical are conveniently located on two existing steel fence posts and at the end of the Radio Shack building. My other two verticals use 3 inch, 10 foot long steel fence posts that I cemented into the ground. They're all located about 40 to 45 feet from the base of each vertical. Each fence post has an eye bolt to attach the turnbuckles. The ropes are attached to the turnbuckles with those same Mastrant rope clamps and I also use these rope tensioners to make the process easier. These two are sold by Mastrant and they make adjusting the ropes and adding the clamps really easy. As I mentioned earlier, this vertical is part of my three element parasitic 12 direction 160 meter array. Hey, please check out my video explaining that if you're interested. I'll put a link for that video below this one. These irrigation tubing verticals are a great option for 160 meter radiators. I think they're way more affordable and easier to install than using tower sections. For 80 meters, it'd be really easy to install a few of these for a transmit array. Hey, 73, this is Steve, V6WZ.